You said uh, um, that we should not only focus on politics and peace agreements in the DRC, but um, more on, the, on economics. Why? If you follow the money, you get to the bottom line and why this war is the deadliest war in the world since World War II. You see that it's these militias and armed groups that are fighting over the, the vast mineral wealth in the Congo. They are fighting for, they're contesting for control of the mines themselves, for the smuggling routes out of the country and all the transport and other things that occur on the way. And so that is, I mean, it's, it's a huge bonanza. No rule of law. So anybody that controls it, just like a drug deal on the corner, if you control that trade, you make all the money. Mm -hmm. Which kind of mechanism or regulation should be put in place to um, contain this illegal um, trade? Well, Congress already took the first step by making sure that they passed a bill last year, a transparency bill, basically turning the light on and saying companies now that import products into the United States, mostly cell phones and computers and other big ticket items like that, they have to tell us where they're getting these minerals from. Just simply disclose honestly and truthfully where you're getting this stuff. And if you're getting it from a mine that's causing a war, that's causing terrible rape, then you, you got to let the public know. And then they can make their own choices about whether or not they're going to buy your products in the future. The next step now for Congress is to push the United States government to push Obama's administration to create a certification program, the same kind of thing we did with blood diamonds, when we said, you know what, it's not acceptable just to buy these things and have the terrible atrocities occur in West Africa. You're now, we're not going to buy those kinds of diamonds anymore. We're only going to buy the ones that are clean. Once you create that system, it creates a demand internally to clean up the system, because otherwise you won't make money. And that's what we need now, and we need Secretary Clinton to lead that. Um, President Kabila ordered the uh, lift of a six-month ban on mining in the three eastern provinces of Maniema, North and South Kivu, effective this Thursday. The objective is um, to have a tracing program that will conform to the international standards and break up with the armed group that are still active in that, uh, uh, in that area and are involved in the mineral trade. Is this enough? No, this is like asking the wolf guard to guard the chicken house. I mean, the, the guys who are in charge of the military in Congo uh, took advantage of the ban, and they consolidated their control over some of the mines. None of that money goes into the state treasury to fund education and health. It all goes into the pockets of these guys to build their nice houses and put into foreign bank accounts. These are all the guys who, if Kabila didn't take care of them, would overthrow him. So it's a political system that's just diseased from the, from, from the beginning. So therefore, you can't rely simply on the Congolese to solve this problem because the demand for the problem is caused by us outside it, people who use laptops, people who use cell phones, and all the other products that use the minerals that are bought in the Congo. So we need to work together with the governments in the region and the companies who benefit from all this illicit trade. We need to work together to create a system that says we're only going to buy peacefully, legally mined minerals from the Congo. Anything else doesn't get bought, and if you do it, you're going to be fine. If you buy that stuff and you get caught, you're going to be fine. So, with your organization, um, Enough Project, you've launched the Raise Hope for Congo campaign to highlight the issue of conflict minerals that fueled the war in the DRC. Can you tell us about it? Yes, you know, in the end, these are places far away from the United States, and nobody, you know, no, it's not that they don't care, it's that they don't know. And so we need to raise the awareness of the average consumer in the United States to learn, in fact, that the products they use every day, the computers and the cell phones they use every day, are actually fueling a war halfway around the world. Once consumers learn that and say, wait a minute, I don't want that to happen, then they get in touch with Apple and Hewlett Packard and Dell, and they create a demand amongst those companies to say, wait, don't produce these kinds of products if they're going to kill people. And then, in turn, the companies at the top of the chain who are selling these products go back down the supply chain and they say, wait a minute, you're selling us minerals that come from places where it's causing violence. You're going to have to change that or we're not going to buy it anymore. So we're creating that demand from the consumer through our political system to our, to our big companies that then create downward pressure all the way down on the supply chain right into Congo and say, you're not going to make money anymore from our purchases if you continue with business as usual. That's, that's the theory of change that we are uh, undertaking. That's what worked with the Blood Diamonds campaign in West Africa.
And do you, I mean, do you get the expected uh, results with this campaign? It just started, in, you know, in the last year. We've already got legislation passed. It's already thrown. The ban in, in Congo, the mining ban that Kabila put in, demonstrates that they're listening now. They're trying to figure out what to do. So we're, we're one quarter of the way there. we got a significant way to go. But today's hearing and the involvement of people like Ben Affleck demonstrate that, in fact, people aren't just going to walk away from this thing. And the biggest, the biggest element in all this is the American consumer, who increasingly, particularly on college campuses, is learning about this issue just like they learned about Darfur, and they're saying, this is unacceptable, make it change. One last question, sir, please. How all this, how all the, uh, these efforts you're talking about can help tackle another big issue, impunity in the DRC? Yeah. I think the, the flip side of all the work we're doing on the mineral stuff is to reinforce the justice sector, is to build a, a sector that says accountability for the crimes that are being committed in Congo is essential. You're not going to get that justice system built if it's business as usual economically. So you've got to work at both things at the same time. Build the political systems, the good governance as they call it, and build an economic system that's free of the terrible corruption, violent extraction, and illegal uh, uh, smuggling that is the hallmark of the system today. So it's putting both of those together, putting the political effort together with the economic effort that has the best chance of success. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much.